The world's leading industrial powers have made important strides on tackling climate change, President Obama said tonight, saying developed countries needed to take the lead in cutting greenhouse gases. At the G8 summit in Italy, developing countries have now agreed to reduce their emissions by 2050, but in a summit declaration, remain vague about how this goal is to be achieved. There is no specific 50% goal agreed, as the G8 had hoped for. Our foreign affairs correspondent, Jonathan Rugman, is in L'Aquila. Jonathan. John, I've got the joint declaration here by the world's biggest emitters of greenhouse gases, 17 countries. They say they recognise the scientific view that they, the temperatures should not rise by more than 2 degrees C. They say they will work to identify a goal for cuts without saying what those cuts should be. And I have to say that the, the target of agreeing a new framework on tackling climate change by the end of this year still seems very daunting indeed. Silvio Berlusconi believes he got a result of sorts. Recognition from China and India and 80% of the world's emitters that temperature rises should be capped at 2 degrees. But as for Delhi and Beijing and other developing nations cutting their emissions by 50%, well, they wouldn't budge. Copenhagen is not too far around. It's not too far away. <laughs> Still, a significant moment, the Prime Minister said, of the 2 degree pledge, a stepping stone to a new global treaty. But aren't you overhyping it, given that anything agreed here is not a binding commitment, it's a, an aspiration and a goal? And, of course, you haven't persuaded the Chinese and the Indians to cut their emissions by 50%, which is what you wanted to do. I think we've got the first step towards Copenhagen, but it's the first significant step, uh, which is irreversible. You've got all the major countries prepared to accept that there's scientific evidence that they must act on climate change. Then you've got the developed countries saying they're prepared to cut emissions by 80%. Never happened before. Then you've got us saying, as the developed economies, we want the whole world to cut by 50%. Now, that's what the negotiations are now going to be about, right up to Copenhagen, with the Chinese, the Indians. But they are now part of a, an argument and part of a debate that accepts that climate change has got to be reversed. The Indians, well, they're deaf to talk of emissions cuts without being paid for it. The West paying the East to clean up its act. The Chinese are asking why can't the world's richest nations agree on cuts right now themselves. But Barack Obama is far more focused on pushing more modest goals through his own Senate than pleasing his European friends. I'm the first one to acknowledge that progress on this issue will not be easy. Uh, and I think that one of the things we're going to have to do is fight uh, the temptation uh, towards cynicism, uh, to feel that the problem is so immense that somehow we cannot make significant strides. But while the Americans are talking about a good start, the head of the UN is clearly unimpressed. The policies that they have uh, stated so far is not enough, is not sufficient enough to meet the target. The Italians have been accused of spying on their own summit, listening in on the world's leaders from headphones outside the room so they can advise Berlusconi what to say inside, though this is hotly denied. And amid this disaster zone, there's talk of rebuilding the G8 as something bigger and better. But as long as the world and his wife come along, 17 leaders today and more tomorrow, what to call this may prove little more than academic. What? George Clooney is here too for some reason. And though a TV doctor won't resuscitate this town or this summit, a touch of glamour certainly helps. Now, Ban Ki-moon has called yet another summit on climate change to be held in New York on September the 22nd. But the challenges still seem immense. You've got Barack Obama, a new broom in the United States, who is talking tonight about wrestling with these issues in his own country. Uh, about pushing legislation through the Senate. And, of course, you may have to find agreement on a massive fund. We're possibly talking about billions of dollars here to, to persuade India and China to invest in green technology in case they don't do it themselves. Well, Jonathan, I see that um, the, the leaders have just issued a statement about Iran. That's right, John. Within the last few minutes, Barack Obama and Gordon Brown have issued a joint statement saying that the continued detention of a British embassy employee, an Iranian citizen, is unacceptable. And I think this could well herald the possible recall of the British ambassador and possibly other European ambassadors by the end of this week. Jonathan Rugman uh, in L'Aquila.
And uh, we shall be returning to matters Iranian later in the program when we look at what's been happening today in terms of protests and repression. Uh, Fourteen people in Britain are now thought to have died after coming down with the swine flu virus. The chief medical officer said today, with more on that and the rest of the day's news, Carl. The UK now has the third highest number of cases of swine flu in the world after the US and Mexico. There are nearly 10,000 laboratory confirmed cases here, but as many patients are being diagnosed on the spot by their GPs, the true figure is thought to be much higher. It's very difficult to be sure uh, just how many cases there are. As you know, the number of laboratory confirmed cases is just less than 10,000. For the last 10 days or so, many cases have been clinically diagnosed. Uh, and so we could be pretty sure that there's at least twice that number overall. The Conservatives say the government may be preparing to make cuts to the NHS budget. They say the NHS has been asked to plan for efficiency savings of up to £20 billion in 2010-2011. The Tories say that if the savings are not reinvested, they will equate to a cut of 2.3% to the NHS budget. And an investigation by our sister programme, More for News, has discovered that thousands of computer viruses have infected NHS computers during the last financial year and that in a significant number of cases this impacted on patient care. In some cases, doctors were prevented from accessing patient information or even locked out of their computers. At one facility, a virus caused patients' cancer treatments to be rescheduled. You can see the entire report on More for News tonight at 8. Six members of a bicycle gang have been given 15 to 18 year terms for murdering an East London schoolboy who is sitting in a park with friends. The gang, calling themselves the London Fields Boys, attacked and killed 14 year old Shaquille Smith last August. The six, aged from 17 to 20 years old, were found guilty last month. After the break, Iranian riot police fire into the air to break up the first public protests for two weeks. And these Hungarian neo-Nazis are among those being wooed by the BNP as they search for far-right allies in the European Parliament. <laughs> 